yard's full of hungry kids working up an appetite. Here you go. They're having fun now, but the countdown to dinner's on, and it's my job to deliver. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. Simple is best. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. You can do it too. You can do it too. I'll show you how to turn your own kitchen into a pizza parlor. No pre-planning, no recipe, because around here, anything goes. It used to be the toughest part about making pizza at home was making the pizza dough, but not anymore because now all you have to do is go to the frozen food section and buy it already made. That's what I do because, hey, the best part about making pizza is the toppings. Pizza sauce is one of the simplest sauces I know how to make. It stars two basic ingredients, canned tomatoes loaded with red ripe flavors and dried oregano and lots of it because pizza sauce is as simple as making a tomato sauce with lots of oregano in it. It really is that easy. So here's how I make a quick tomato sauce because when the yard is full of kids running around I don't have time to simmer away for hours and hours and hours. Start with a big splash of olive oil and of course a couple of onions. It's worth taking the time to add an onion because it'll add a nice pungent aroma to the sauce. It helps cut the rich sweetness of the tomatoes. I'm just going to sweat this down for a second until I can really smell it, until it's fully aromatized. I'm not going to brown the onions, I don't have time really, and you don't need to. They're going to add plenty of flavor just like this. Of course, I do have enough time to add a clove or two of garlic. Now, if you have some tomato paste kicking around, that's a great ingredient to add to a pizza sauce to really bulk up that tomato flavor. It's purely optional because there is a ton of flavor in the can, but if you've got tomato paste, throw some of that in too. And since I hate having half-empty little cans of tomato paste kicking around my refrigerator, I'm just going to throw the whole thing right in. Time for the tomatoes. I'll turn that heat down. And now for the oregano, which is actually sometimes called the pizza herb. It just smells like a pizza parlor. Now at this point, I really only need to simmer this just long enough for the oregano flavors to come out, for the garlic flavors to permeate the tomato. It really only takes just a very few minutes. Which gives me plenty of time to whip something up to cool off the thirsty hordes outside. It's time for some lemonade. Homemade lemonade, of course. I'm going to make a gallon or so, and of course the secret to homemade lemonade is not just the lemon juice, it's the lemon zest. That's the key to flavor. Now you don't need to zest all the lemons, I'm just going to zest half of them. And I'll simply squeeze all that juice in. Now everybody has a different idea about what makes lemonade taste good. My favorite lemonade has a bright lemon fragrance to it, perfume. That's why I use the lemon zest. So there's eight lemons or so. Next up, some sugar. For a gallon of water, I'll use about two cups of sugar or so. That's about a half cup of sugar per liter of water. 
Now the sugar's not gonna fully dissolve in the lemon juice, but it will dissolve once I add the sugar and lemon juice to the water. Now for some ice. There goes my lemon syrup. Now to top this up, you don't just have to add cold water, you can also add sparkling water. Grenadine syrup. This is an old bartender's trick, the kind of thing you learn when you work in the restaurant business. I got the feeling this lemonade stand is gonna sail out in about 10 seconds. It's time to get this pizza party started. Who wants lemonade? When you've got a yard full of hungry kids, there's no time to muck around in the kitchen, but there is time to play around with easy to make pizza. Today I'm using store-bought frozen dough, just thaw and go. I also have an authentic pizza sauce simmering away. That means a pot full of canned tomatoes and lots of dried oregano. Now, the next major part of any good pizza is the dough. And for an authentic pizza parlor taste, you've got to have one of these puppies, a stone. Now I've got my oven set at 450 degrees and the key to a stone is to preheat it. So in it goes. Here's how you make that authentic looking shape that defines a good pizza. I'll just cover that in a little bit of cornmeal so it doesn't stick to my hands. The basic bottom line idea is this. Keep your fingers away from the outside. Leave that crust alone. Just work the center of the dough. That's the key. Now one of the keys to good homemade pizza is to make sure that it doesn't end up soggy. So there's a couple of things you can do to keep that from happening. First of all, brush your dough with a bit of oil before you start adding your toppings. That way the water in the toppings can't penetrate to the dough itself and turn it soggy. Simply pick up your pizza, set it right on top. If it doesn't fit, don't worry about it. It's all gonna become clear here in just a second. Now probably the biggest mistake that a lot of folks make when they're making homemade pizza is they put too much topping on, especially the sauce. Remember, it's a very strongly flavored sauce. There's tons of flavor in this sauce. You don't need a lot, a little bit will go a long way. Now comes the cheese. So I'll start with just some traditional mozzarella. Here's some nice cheddar cheese as well. Now I think of cheeses like mozzarella and cheddar as the base cheeses, but then you've got garnish cheeses. Cheeses like feta, for instance. Now I've got some hard grating Parmesan cheese here. I always put this one on last. Now that's a cheese lover's pizza. Next time you open a pizza parlor in your kitchen, try playing around with the cheeses a little bit. Experiment, have some fun with them. Cheddar, perfect for pizza making. There are thousands of different types of cheeses out there, and every single one of them is good with a pizza of some kind. When you get to the supermarket, check out the selection and go for it. Try some new flavors. Understand that they all follow the same basic steps of cheese making. Cheese begins with a form of milk. That milk is allowed to sour. It's then allowed to curdle, and the protein-rich curds are separated from the liquid whey. Now, how those curds are dealt with is what defines a particular cheese. If the curds are stacked up very high in small pieces and pressed together, they're cheddared and become cheddar cheese, which is great for pizza because it's got nice flavor and it melts so well. It's high in fat. If those curds are taken and kneaded like bread until they become soft and pliable, they turn into mozzarella cheese. That's why when you cut your pizza slice, it strings all over the place. Great cheese for pizza. Gotta have mozzarella. Now, once the cheese is formed, if the form is taken and dipped into brine, they become 
feta cheese. Feta cheese has a very distinctive saltiness to it. Lots of flavor. It works great on pizza because it's very distinctive. It tastes good. The last step in cheese making is the aging process. The longer the cheese is aged, the less moisture it has and the more intense the flavor becomes. And that's why Parmesan is so good on pizza because a little bit goes a long way. You just sprinkle it on and you're good to go. The bottom line is this. Find a cheese you like and make the pizza your own. Now, if you really want to impress your friends and neighbors, tell them you've made a Quattro Fromaggio pizza. That just means four cheeses in Italian. And this one I'm doing a little bit differently. I took one of the balls of dough and cut it in half. There's one half, and the other half I've rolled out nice and thin. This one's going to be a thin crust pizza. There's lots of cornmeal on there already. Spread that on. And because this is a thin crust pizza, I definitely can't weigh it down with lots and lots and lots of toppings. So I'm simply going to make the classic margarita style pizza. And for that, I'm simply going to slice these tomatoes really, really thin. I've also got some beautiful fresh basil leaves. Actually, you know what? I think I'll slip them underneath each one of those tomato leaves. Got some pre-grated Parmesan cheese. Just sprinkle that on a bit. A little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And of course, a touch of salt. And that's a margarita style pizza. Hey, simple is best. Now while that one bakes off, I've got time to make a few more pizzas and there's a yard full of hungry kids out there. I'm probably gonna have to whip up a dessert too. The kids are playing outside and I'm playing in the kitchen. I've turned the place into a pizza parlor for the day, so I'm whipping up a few pies to feed the hungry hordes. I began with easy to use store-bought pizza dough. Then I whipped up an authentic pizza sauce with flavor-packed canned tomatoes and lots of dried oregano. My first pie headed for the oven with four different cheeses. The next one I made thin crust style. I topped it off with tomato slices, basil leaves, and grated Parmesan. It's still in the oven. The first one's out and standing by. And now, for the next bag of dough. Actually, I'm done making pizzas. I've got another idea. I'm gonna make calzones. Sprinkle some of that around. I'm gonna make four calzones, so I'll simply cut this into four pieces. There we go. Three of them can stand by, and we'll start working on the first one. There's one, good to go. And now for number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, now of course I can put just about any topping under the sun inside these calzones. I do have some pizza sauce left, so I'll put some of this in a couple of them anyway. Now when you're stuffing a calzone, you want to leave quite a bit of dough along the edges untouched. You're going to need that dough to stick the works together. There's two down, but I want to make two more completely different. So, for a sauce on the next two, I've got some pesto. Pesto, of course, is a puree of basil, parmesan, a little bit of garlic. There's pine nuts in there. Bottom line, pesto's packed with flavor. I think I'll keep the tomato stuffed version nice and simple. Just a little bit of mozzarella cheese on there. There we go. Now I've got some sausages looking for a home. These are left over from the barbecue last night. And that's one of the great things about pizza night around here. It's an opportunity to use up all kinds of leftovers in the fridge. Now for something to put on top of that pesto. Let's see, what's in here? There's some prosciutto. Oh, these will work. Some fire roast peppers. 
Okay, I'll just sprinkle that around on the pesto. There we go. And the flame roast peppers. Lots of flavor in here. Now these are actually a fairly sweet pepper. These are not a spicy hot pepper. They've got lots of flavor in them from the flame roasting that takes the skins off. Now all I have to do is fold them up, seal them, and bake away. Now the folding's pretty important because you really want to seal these up tight. You don't want all that sauce running out. So here's how I do it. I start on one end and I basically just start rolling it back into itself and pulling and stretching as I go. See how that works? And that way, because I'm turning the dough around, there's no way anything can escape. Now before I send these into the oven to meet their fate, I think I'll brush a little bit of olive oil on top of them. That'll just help them brown up a little bit. Just make them look a little bit more appetizing. Now I don't want the calzones to stick to that, so I'm going to use cornmeal. I could use flour, but cornmeal won't burn as easily. Just look at those beautiful calzones ready to fire. And my thin crust is done too. It's really starting to look like a pizza parlor around here, but now it's time to open the ice cream parlor. Everything I'm going to need to make a really cool dessert and my homemade, world-famous butterscotch sauce. This stuff is gonna make me a hero today, and it's so simple to make. Begin with a cup of white sugar poured into a tight pile. Carefully add a cup of water just around the edges and without stirring, heat over a medium-high flame until the mixture dissolves into a simple sugar syrup. The temperature will slowly rise and the syrup will begin to lightly brown. When it does, gently swirl until it becomes golden brown. Then, add a stick of butter, stirring until smooth. Add one cup of cream, stir some more, then refrigerate until thick and cool. I absolutely love making butterscotch. I love making caramel in general. I love the way you can take something so simple, white sugar, and add so much flavor to it. Now, I've got vanilla ice cream with butterscotch on top. Now some sliced almonds. Now another level of ice cream. A little bit more of the almonds. And last but not least, hey, chocolate. So, calzones are baking, pizzas are ready, but I still have one bag of dough to work with. I started today with four balls of pizza dough and a whole lot of ideas. So far, one of those balls has turned into thin crust pizza, one of them has turned into calzones, and one of them has turned into a classic round pizza with four cheeses, quattro fromaggio. The fourth ball of dough is about to become twisties. This is as easy as it gets. I'm actually gonna make these dessert style twisties. That's two desserts in one day. Hey, I'm running for best dad on the block and this is gonna sew up the kid boat right here. Now, all I'm gonna do is brush a little bit of melted butter on there. I've got some simple white sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon to it. Lots of aromatic classic flavor there. Mix that in and then simply sprinkle the cinnamon sugar right over the dough. And now all I have to do is twist it once, twice, twisty. Boy, this is easy. A kid could do it. Now all I have to do is bake them off. 
It'll take about, geez, six, seven minutes. Not very long to turn golden brown. Now, the moment I've been waiting for, it's time for a taste. Here we go. Hmm, boy, those four cheeses are really good together. This is what being a chef at home tastes like right here. You know, sometimes it's the simplest things that have the most impact in the world of food, especially when you've got a table full of kids. Sure, it's easy to pick up the phone and order up a pizza, but why not take a stab at making your own? It's just as easy, definitely a lot more fun, and besides, homemade always tastes better. Zones. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, up with your sword. Butterscotch parfait. Here we go. Wow. From me to you. That's for everybody. There you go. You like butterscotch more than you like pizza? Yeah. Everybody like the ice cream? Yeah! 